Welcome to PWA's For a Beginner series. My name is Beth. I am a software engineer working for Microsoft, specifically in the Windows org. And here's my Twitter handle on the screen. If you would like to chat about PWA's afterwards, feel free to follow me on Twitter. There are going to be four chapters total for the series. Today, we're starting with chapter one, which we're going to introduce you to progressive web apps. And later on, we'll have three more chapters starting from a little bit into Service Worker, and then we'll talk about how to get started building progressive web apps using all the cool toolings. And then in the last chapter, we'll introduce you to advanced capabilities. This is the first video of chapter one. Um, there are going to be five total videos. Today, here with me is Patrick from all the way around the globe. We're going to talk to you about uh, what are progressive web apps. Hi, everyone. My name is Patrick. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I work at Microsoft. I'm a product manager at Microsoft. I actually work on the Microsoft Edge browser. And I've been working for the past on developer tooling and more recently on progressive web apps. So I'm really excited to be here because I have a real passion for the web. And I'm. Uh, um, it's going to be fun talking to you all about progressive web apps today. All right, without any delay, let's get into it. Um, so Patrick, tell me a little bit more about what are progressive web apps. Definitely. So progressive web apps are also known as PWA uh, for short, and they're really a way to build applications for all devices, right? So um, if you want to build an application that works on a laptop, on a desktop computer with Windows or Mac or Linux OS, or if you want to build something on a tablet or mobile device. And if you want to do this from one code base only, then PWA is a great option to do this. Uh, and to build those apps, what you're going to do is you're going to be using the languages of the web. So the same languages that we use to build websites. Um, so the WA part in progressive web apps in PWA stands for web app. And that means you're really using the languages of the web, but uh, you're using them to create real device apps, not just websites. And then the P part, the progressive part, really means that the app that you're going to be building will progressively enhance to match the different capabilities that these different devices have. Your application is not going to be exactly the same on each of these devices, even if it comes from one and single code base. So what I'm hearing is you're telling me that I can build actual like real device specific apps. Um, but how different or similar does progressive web, app, web apps compare to, you know, native apps then? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, as you said, you know, we often call them native apps. That's the term that you'll probably hear most often. Um, you can also call them device specific. And those applications, they use specific languages. You know, you can use C++, Objective-C. It really depends on which device you're programming your app for. And as soon as you're done building the app, you'll need to compile it and package it as an executable. And this process of compiling and packaging is going to be different for each device. So essentially, at the end of the day, you'll, you're going to have to have one code base and one process to distribute your app per device. PWAs are very different uh, from this because you'll write the code once and then it'll adapt to all of the devices from this one code base. You won't need to package this app on the different devices. You'll actually be hosting the code on the web server, just like for a website, really. And that also means, by the way, that your app can be accessed via a web address, a URL in a web browser. So that means you could send that URL to somebody and they can access the app directly in their web browser. And it also means that search engines can index the app, making them more uh, easily discoverable. Uh, but they can also be distributed in application stores, uh, just like specific uh, device-specific apps as well. Let's go back to that store idea a little bit later. So I heard um, you know, how PWAs are compared to native apps. What about how similar or different do they compare to website? Are progressive web apps just websites? Yeah. they're almost just like websites, right? They use the same technologies, as we said, they're hosted on the web server, just like a website. They're linkable, discoverable through search engines. They're safe to use in web browsers. So all of that good web stuff is still true for PWAs, but they're also much more than this. They can be installed and that makes a huge difference. Installing an app means that suddenly it has its own icon. So if you're using Windows, for example, the icon will show in the taskbar. If you're on Mac, it'll be in the dock. 
uh, it'll be in the start menu, you know, anywhere you see normal traditional apps, PWAs will be there too. They'll have their own icon and they'll have their own standalone window as well. They are no longer constrained to the boundaries of the web browser. They can have their own standalone window. Um, and so that makes it a lot better for users because they recognize applications by icons and they're you're very used to the fact uh, they're very used to using traditional apps, so they'll, it'll make it easier for them. Uh, the other thing uh, compared to websites is that they have access to much more advanced capabilities that traditional websites typically don't. That's super cool. Tell me a little bit more about these capabilities that you just mentioned. Yeah, um, I can give you a couple of examples. Um, if you have a mobile phone right now, you know that if you tap a photo in the list of photos that you have on your phone, you can tap the share icon in the bottom or wherever it is. And when you do, normally the, the phone shows you a list of applications that you can share this photo with. So that means that the photo album app and whatever other application you're sharing the photo with, for example, the text message application, they know nothing of each other. They go through this middle thing where the operating system takes over and shares the photo from one to the next. Well, the great thing about PWA is that they also have that advanced capability. They can share content to other app through the same mechanism, and they can also receive content. They can be registered as a shared target. Um, another example that I love to give because it's really, really important for applications is offline support. Websites typically can't really function offline. If you try to go to a website in a web browser and you're on a plane without any internet access, you'll be granted with a white page, you know, a blank page. If you go and install a PWA today and try to be offline, the PWA can keep on functioning even if you're offline, right? Just like a regular app. Um, obviously, when you install the app, that's when you need internet access, but that's the same for any style of app, right? But after that, the app can keep on functioning offline by using something called the service worker, which I think we're gonna be talking about later, uh, it can do things like cache information in a, in a local storage. It can even download things like movies or music or articles for offline viewing. It can update data in the background on a regular basis and all that kind of stuff. So just like real apps, uh, they keep on functioning even if you're offline. That is very interesting. But surely we're talking about, you know, web technology in that space. Um, they can do as much as real apps, right? Like, you know, low level hardware stuff or complicated computing, maybe? Yeah, yeah, that's like, that's something that I hear very often. Uh, and I think it's less and less true. So, you know, progressive web apps are based on the web, as I was saying before. And the web was invented as a way to browse text documents, really. Um, and because they are based on that, it's very natural to think that PWAs can't do as much as real apps, you know? Uh, but the thing is the web has been in a constant evolution over these past, whatever, 30 years. And the gap between what the web can do and what native apps can do has been closing more and more, you know, ever so slightly. Again, it's in constant evolution. It's not slowing down. In fact, it's probably accelerating. Many companies and not just the companies who make browsers collaborate together in closing this gap. And we are getting things that are really interesting. I, I wanna you know, talk about two really quickly. One is WebAssembly, also called WASM, which allows to run native modules, like for example, um, C++ code that can manipulate movies or images or uh, songs or whatever. You can compile this down with WebAssembly to a module that will run on the web. So either on your website or in progressive web apps, and it'll run at a speed that's near native. Uh, another thing that I like to talk about often is the low level hardware access. Progressive web apps have access to APIs to talk over Bluetooth or USB, uh, NFC, and many more as well. Okay, that sounds very interesting. And uh, we've talked a lot about, you know, what are PWAs. Um, so how do we actually go ahead and start creating one? Cool, yeah. So. I think what you'll need to do if you want to start creating your first PWA is you'll need sort of three layers of knowledge. And we'll start at the bottom here, which is really you'll need working knowledge of the languages of the web, which are HTML, CSS and JavaScript, 
And that's going to be useful to describe sort of the user interface of your application, right? And then on top of this, you'll actually need a little bit more than what websites traditionally do. Um, and those are uh, the three building blocks of any progressive web app. One, you'll need a, a manifest, which is a JSON file, so JavaScript object notation file, which will describe the icon that your app wants to use, the name of the app, some description, and a few other things that will describe how, how your application will integrate into the operating system. Next, you'll need a service worker, and that part is a little bit more complicated, uh, and that file is going to be responsible for making your app reliable. Uh, it's going to do a ton of things like requesting and fetching information from the network, from the web server, you know, being responsible for offline support, a lot of things like that. And then third, you'll need a secure connection to your web server, which is what the HTTPS block here means. So if you've got those two layers, you're, you know, you can build a PWA and that's great. But really, you want to be thinking about the third layer as well, because that's where it, think it starts being interesting. Uh, that's where you're going to start to make your app uh, different on each device, adapt, you know, to the form factor of the device, um, integrate into the operating system, and then also all of the offline support kind of thing is in that top layer as well. Cool. That's actually a lot to think about. And I know that we're going to go into a little bit details in the series as well. For example, in chapter two, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about service workers. And then chapter four, we're going to talk in details about capabilities as well. So now before we wrap this video up, uh, you mentioned app stores earlier. Can you tell me a little bit more on like PWAs in the store? Yeah, uh, excellent question. Yes, I did talk about this quickly and then uh, we, we chatted about something else. I think app stores are really important because users, a lot of users are going to look for your application in an app store, right? Uh, they tend to trust them. They are generally a good experience to install application. They're really tailored to the device. And then on some devices like mobile, there's really is no other choice, right? You got to go to an app store anyway. Um, a PWA really is a website at the core. And so you can't publish a website directly in an app store, but you can use a tool called pwabuilder.com, uh, which you'll learn a lot more about in a later video as well. Um, and that tool is really great because you can give it the name, sorry, the URL to your progressive web app. It will scan it. It'll give you some warnings if there's any errors or, or something like that. And if everything's fine, it will give you a package or actually it's multiple packages depending on where you want to host your app. And uh, with this, you can use it to publish your application to the iOS store, you know, the app store for iOS, the Android store for Android devices, as well as the Microsoft store for Windows. Awesome. Thank you so much, Patrick, today for helping us understanding sure. what progressive web apps are. Um, and just to recap, today we talked about what is a progressive web app, how does it compare to native apps versus, you know, simply websites. And lastly, we talked about device-specific capabilities and even deploying these apps to the uh, app stores. And here are some resources on the screen that you can go explore on your own about progressive web apps. And we'll, we'll be introducing you to service workers in the next video. Stay tuned. Thanks, Beth.